The Novel's Extra Chapter 11. Change, 1. After spending the rest of Friday working out and training, it became Saturday before I noticed. Traveling club announcement, there will be a short trip on Sunday to serve as a freshman orientation. The traveling club's orientation was today. The meeting place was Cube Portal Station, which connected Cube to Seoul. After stuffing my gun in my cross bag, I walked to the meeting place. Many of the leading characters, namely Kim Soo Ha, Yi Yang An, Chai Ni Yoon, and Yu Yun Ha, were already present. They seemed completely oblivious to my existence, but being with them still made me nervous. Today in Seoul, an unexpected incident would occur. This would be the story's first major incident. While I was organizing today's impending incident in my head, the club president arrived. Hello, I'm the club president, Oh Han Hyun. I didn't believe it when I saw so many club applications, but it's real. Who knew such amazing cadets would join my club? With his average height and gentle first impression, Oh Han Hyun looked around the club members while scratching his neck. First, I'll give a short introduction about the traveling club. With a bashful smile, he took out a piece of paper from his pocket. It looked like he had a speech prepared. I described Oh Han Hyun as a timid person, so I wasn't too surprised with his actions. Kuum. Once or twice a month, we will leave Cube to travel. The purpose of the travel is to relax. So training during trips will be strictly forbidden. It's also why our club is called Healing Rain. Kuum. After clearing his throat once more, he put the paper away. What, that was it. Today, as part of the orientation, we'll take a short trip to Seoul. From here was what I wrote. The club members would form two people groups and go to Seoul. We'll have a theme for each trip. Since today's meant to be an orientation, we'll just have a free trip without anything complicated. But instead of traveling alone, we'll split into groups of two. Here, Kim Suha would be paired with Chai Ni Yoon and run into trouble while they were looking around a museum. As for that trouble, I would be able to experience it soon. Then we'll start by drawing lots. Drawing lots was completely based on luck, but I could choose my fate. Thanks to my gift, observation and reading, I could see the content of the lots clearly. With my hand on my chin, I fell in thought. Should I choose Kim Soo Ha, or Chai Ni Yoon? I'll go first. At that moment, Yu Yun Ha stepped up. I watched her pull out a name without much thought. In the next instant, I realized I overlooked one vital information. It was the oddity known as Kim Hajin. The lot drawn by Yu Yun Ha had the following name. Kim Hajin. My heart dropped immediately. But there was no change in Yu Yun Ha's facial expression. With her usual mask in place, she stared at me with calm eyes. Thankfully, everything else had remained unchanged. Kim Su Ha became pairs with Chai Ni Yoon, and Yi Yang An became pairs with the club president. After drawing lots was over, the members gathered by their pairs and stood in front of the portal. Portal, the cutting edge technology utilizing magic science and engineering. With a height of 15 meters and width of 30 meters, this giant gate was built in over a hundred places throughout Korea. With it, going from Seoul to Pusan took less than three seconds. Cadet Kim Ha Jin. Confirmed. The portal operator gave us a seal. This seal would resonate with the portal and take us to Seoul. Let's go. The club president went in first. The next to enter the swaying blue portal was Kim Soo Ha, Yi Yang An, Chai Ni Yoon. And finally me. A strange feeling enveloped my body, but only for a moment. In the blink of an eye, the surrounding scenery changed to an unfamiliar place. A futuristic mixture of blue and gray, it had to be Seoul Portal Station. With just two steps, I had crossed the East Sea. It's 12 p.m. right now, so we'll meet back here at 6. Because the portal we were at was connected to Cube, there wasn't anyone around. But the portal next door is connecting Seoul to Pusan should be crowded with people. After all, they were both global cities. For now, follow me. Following the club president, we received another seal from the portal employees before leaving the portal station. After coming outside, I could immediately see the words, Yongsan Station. You can go wherever you want as a pair using the public transportation system. For today, we won't require you to write a report, but make sure you're back by 6. If you're late, you'll be penalized. With a warning from the club president, cadets left as pairs. Yu Yenha didn't say anything to me, 
but I've followed behind her for now. When I was checking out how Yongsan Station changed from what I knew, Yu Yenha suddenly came to a stop. After quickly turning around, she blurted out sharply, Let's split up. Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure. Yu Yenha most likely planned to visit the guild her father ran. I was fine with it. I planned to join Kim Suha no matter what Yu Yenha did. Again. But as though I ticked her off again, she glared at me with her hand on her hip. Don't talk to me so casually. One, huh? This is the second warning. There won't be a third time. I knew that she wasn't bluffing. If I did it a third time, she might really get back at me in an unthinkable way. Yes, I understand. I apologize, TSK. Young lady Yu Yenha then walked away without a goodbye. It was clear how much she disliked me. Thus, Yu Yenha and I split up after just five minutes of arriving in Seoul. Phew, I thought I was lost. After switching buses three times, I finally arrived at the National Weapons Museum. Replicas of weapons excavated by Korea were displayed in this museum. Today, an incident would occur here. With a trembling heart, I walked in. Daddy, what's that? Oh, that's the Four Tiger Sword. Perhaps because it was a weekend, the museum was bustling with parents and children who hoped to become heroes. But no matter the size of a crowd, there was bound to be people who stood out. Chai Niyun and Kim Suha were such examples, but I could only see Chai Niyun for now. I want it. Smacking her lips, she was eyeing a bow in a glass display. But my target today wasn't Chai Niyun. Looking around, I began to look for someone. It didn't take long. The main character's tall and handsome features easily stood out. Approaching him furtively, I scanned the weapon Kim Suha was looking. Thankfully, it was a weapon I knew. Is this the famous seven-branched sword? Before the Korean peninsula was yet unified, the king of Baekje, the then most powerful kingdom, had bestowed this iron sword to the Japanese emperor. It was a historical weapon said to have been found in the final room of the Wairi Aizyong dungeon. 2. Hmm? Ah. Kim Suha's sight turned to me from the seven-branched sword. However, it seemed he was at a loss for words. I had a good idea why. Kim Hajin. Ah, right. Sorry, I didn't expect to meet you here, so I forgot. With a kind smile, he pointed at another section of the museum. Apparently, the rifle Napoleon used is here. Have you seen it? Napoleon's rifle? Yep. Apparently, it was a reward from a dungeon in France. According to my world setting, any weapon used by a legendary figure could become an artifact. Since that was the case, it wasn't weird for there to be Napoleon's rifle, even though I didn't mention it in my novel. Though I did want a rare weapon, I wasn't really interested in a replica. No, I don't think I'll have time. I unintentionally answered without zeal. I felt strange talking to the main character I wrote. I wasn't sure how to describe this feeling, but it definitely wasn't pleasant. Kim Suha was handsome, exceptional in martial arts, and had a fantastic personality. He was too perfect, so he felt inhumane. That was why some readers rooted for Shin Jong Hak. Anyways, it should be about time. I tapped on the ground with my sneakers. Then, Right when Kim Suha was saying something, boom, a thunderous sound reverberated through the museum. In an instant, everyone became silent. Kung. 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 Repeated thuds pulsed through the deathly silence. The sound resembling the footsteps of a giant creature soon led to the sound of something breaking. The atmosphere in the museum took a quick turn. Kyak. What is that? The unknown led to anxiety and anxiety quickly led to panic. Ordinary visitors screamed and began to run. However, only death was waiting outside. The safest place was the museum's inside. Stay here. Don't go out. Knowing that it would be dangerous outside, Kim Suha shouted. Currently, the outside of the museum was being attacked by an intermediate rank monster and its subordinates. Just a single intermediate rank monster posed little threat. A hero would arrive in less than a minute, and 20 minutes was enough to take care of the entire situation. But that wasn't the only problem. Jin. There was a Jin here. Simply put, it was a double-pronged attack. After coming to a scene, heroes went to the most dangerous area. Since the museum had security guards, it was less dangerous comparatively, putting it on a lower priority. 
Taking advantage of this fact, the Jin Association dispatched an assassin to target a child considered by the Hero Association to have a special gift. Clang! A sharp sound resounded. It was the sound of glasses shattering. The source of the sound wasn't far away. Turning towards the direction of the sound, Kim Suha shouted, Chai Niyun. Chai Niyun had broken a display case and was taking out the bow inside. Are you crazy? No, I'm perfectly sane. Though it was only a replica, it was still an item on display. The museum's siren rang and its defense mechanism activated. In just three seconds, all exits closed down. People panicked even more, but, thankfully, even an intermediate rank monster couldn't break through the barriers blocking the exits. This is better than stopping people one by one and warning them. With that, she cleared her throat and shouted at the panicking citizens. Everyone. Stay still. It's safer here. We're heroes too. Hey, you. Shut it. Don't just stand there. Grab a weapon too. What? Why should I? Because it's the outside that's dangerous looking at us. No. At Kim Suha, Chai Niyun created a magic arrow on her bow. Look there. She pointed with her eyes. A man wearing a black coat was standing there. Before Kim Suha could say anything, Chai Niyun fired her bow without a shred of hesitation. Hey, don't. Her magic arrow pierced the man's throat. Immediately, Kim Suha froze. He seemed dazed by Chai Niyun's sudden murder. Any ordinary person would have died to her arrow. However, the man grabbed the arrow sticking out of his neck and pulled it out. Black magic power then rose up from his hand, burning the arrow to ash. Tap, tap. The man then turned around, facing the direction the arrow came from. His eyes burned red, as fierce hostility shot out of him. Without a doubt, he was a jinn. Kim Suha's face paled. Just like Chai Niyun, he shattered a display case. He took out the seven-branched sword. Though it was a replica, its faithful reconstruction made it similar to a high-grade weapon. It should be strong enough to destroy a jinn of this level. Oh, that's a nice weapon. I heard it splits into seven branches. Chai Niyun approached with a smirk and stood by Kim Suha's side. I also took out my handgun. I thought about standing next to them, but after consideration, took two steps backward. I was still too weak. If I showed off too much and got targeted by the jinn, that would be the end of me. 1. In Korean, there's a clear way to talk politely or casually, like between friends. Yunha uses a strictly polite speech, while MC is using casual speech that would be between friends slash people of the same age. 2. Wiry Azeong is the name of two early capitals of Baekje chapter 12. Change, 2. A blue sword chi rose up around the seven-branched sword. The purity of the blue mana brightened up the sword's blade. Sneaking a glance at Kim Suha's seven-branched sword, Chai Niyun asked, You ready? Yeah. Meanwhile, I slowly backed off. There was nothing I could do here. Kim Suha would reveal his hidden power and easily take care of this jin. Overwhelmed by Kim Suha's might, Chai Niyun would give up. Seeing Kim Suha as a rival and come to admire him instead. Support me. Fixing his grip on the sword, Kim Suha spoke. Support? Please, I'll be one killing him. Rebutting playfully, Chai Niyun knocked another magic arrow. Goo. But before she could fire, the Jin ignited his magic power. A jet black evil chi hurled towards them like hellfire. But a single streak of light annihilated it. A sword saint could cut fire, wind, as well as magic power. Chai Niyun's arrow then flew through the lifted magic power. The arrow containing condensed mana then pierced through the Jin's shoulder. Kim Suha didn't miss this opportunity. Leaping up, he cut down diagonally with his seven-branched sword. This attack should have severed the jinn's flesh, immobilizing him. But despite having his flesh cut, the jinn smiled. Kim Suha instinctively felt that something was wrong. Immediately afterward, fierce magic power shot out from the cut. As though standing under a torrential rain, Kim Suha was swept away by the magic power. He didn't even have the chance to scream. He flew across the museum and became stuck inside the museum's wall. Both Chai Niyun and I became speechless. Strange. Something was definitely strange. This shouldn't have happened. After being pushed back for a bit, Kim Suha should have released his hidden power and overwhelmed his enemy.
Ooh. Thankfully, Kim Suha got up, but he didn't seem to be in a good state. Hey, are you okay? I'm fine. Ku. Kim Suha needed time to mend his wounds. Now, the Jin was walking towards Chai Niyun. Her face stiffened. Chweek, chweek, Chai Niyun fired two arrows, but none of them were effective. Even though she continued to shoot arrows until the Jin looked like a porcupine, he didn't stop. This isn't regeneration. Chai Niyun murmured in a daze. Just like she said, this Jin didn't have high regenerative power. He simply had a sturdy body. In the first place, I didn't design him to be an opponent Chai Niyun could defeat. Chai Niyun's face turned ghastly pale, as fear and horror began to crop up. Just support me. At that moment, Kim Suha jumped in front of her, blocking the Jin's path. However, the Jin kept his eyes on Chai Niyun. Condensing his black mana on his arm, he produced a giant beast. A wolf-like creature bared its fangs as it shot towards Kim Suha. Yuuk. The Jin fought Kim Suha with one hand and held Chai Niyun's face with the other. Are we screwed? I murmured. By now, I had run away to the back of the exhibition. However, this place was already occupied by what seemed to be a father and child duo. Go that way. Why yes? There, go farther back. It's dangerous here. I could feel my voice trembling, and to be honest, I was scared to death. Be but. While the jinn's too busy fighting, hurry. At my urging, the two quickly scurried away. From my cross bag, I took out my laptop. The jinn in my setting shouldn't have been that strong. What even was that arm? Sneaking a glance, I saw the jinn's wolf-like arm fighting Kim Suha evenly. I had no memory making such a setting. Something, I had to do something. At this rate, both Kim Suha and Chai Niyun could die. Unloading the magazine, I place a bullet on the laptop. My damned hands kept trembling. With the laptop, I check the bullet setting. Equals equals equals, mana bullet, null attribute attack power, three tenths, a bullet with condensed mana. It is much stronger than a gunpowder bullet. Equals 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 it wasn't enough. With an attack power of three, even scratching the gin wouldn't be possible. But would. Increasing the attack power be enough? That was another question. Thankfully, there was a hint within my setting. The reason this world required a variety of heroes was the concept of attributes. Depending on one's attribute, an attack could have varying effects. Contradicting attributes like water and fire could allow one to overcome a difference in power to a certain degree. Now, the jinn in question clearly had a darkness attribute. What pushed back darkness was undoubtedly light, and I could do exactly that. I just had to change the bullet's attribute. Equals equals equals, mana bullet, light attribute attack power, 5 tenths, a bullet with a condensed essence of light, starts a secondary explosion after hitting its target. Equals equals equals, this modification requires 104 SP. Would you like to save this setting? It was expensive. 104 SP was 80% of what I gathered in the past week. But I still wasn't sure if this was enough. Rather than falling short, it was better to overdo it. I tried adjusting the attack power to 6. You do not have enough SP. The value will be adjusted. Attack power, 5. 6 tenths. Would you like to save the adjusted modification? I hit save. In that instant, a white light erupted from the laptop before melting into the magic bullet. A silver white light glistened from the bullet's iron casing. Modification complete. With only this single bullet loaded, I took in a deep breath. Then, I peeked past the wall. Chai Niyun was still struggling to escape from the Jin's grasp, while Kim Suha was fighting the Jin's right arm. No, Kim Suha was pushing the Jin back. We were at an advantage. It seemed he would defeat the right arm soon. The problem was Chai Niyun. Because she couldn't breathe or because the Jin's magic power was poisoning her, the area around her neck was purple. Clicking my tongue, I jumped out. Hey! Then, I shouted loudly. Move! Without even turning around to look, Kim Suha rolled to the side. The Jin's right arm came chasing after him, but that only increased the surface area for me to hit. With a slightly calmer mind, I pulled the trigger. A bright light flashed from the gun barrel as though a flash bomb exploded. The bullet of light emitted pressure and heat befitting its brightness. 
Unable to withstand the bullet's power, the handgun exploded in my hand. The gun's broken components fell down, while I writhed in unendurable pain. Thankfully, the trajectory of the bullet didn't change. It flew along the intended trajectory, striking the jinn's left shoulder. Bullseye! A clump of light erupted from the jinn's arm. The bullet's secondary explosion had detonated. The light disappeared, purifying the jinn's arm. The jinn had thus lost its arm. Chai Niyun, who was on the brink of death, fell to the ground. Kim Suha didn't miss this opportunity. A metal attribute magic power rose up from his sword. The sword saint's all severing sword technique finally activated. It should be limited to just once or twice a day for now, but that was enough. I could just watch from the side now. Hmm? At that moment, a child approached me. It was the child who I met before. The child had a pretty face, but the short hair made it hard to identify her gender. Suddenly, the child grabbed my hand. In an instant, my hand was healed completely. I see, this must be the child the Hero Association barely managed to find. The child with the authority of healing. Thanks. With a grin, I stroked the child's hair. Guu. At that moment, a deep growl rang out. I quickly turned my sight towards the direction of the noise. The Jin, who had lost one arm, was gasping for breath while kneeled in front of Kim Suha. It seemed Kim Suha managed to win. Who? Feeling strength leaving my body, a sigh came out naturally. I sprawled down on the ground. Geek. Chai Niyun, who just regained consciousness, was emptying her stomach with her face pointed down. From her small mouth, vomit continued to fall. The food she had yet to digest dirtied the ground, while pale yellow liquid stacked up around it. Chai Niyun continued to vomit, as though she was coughing out blood. Looking at the horrific scene, I could practically feel her pain. The reason Chai Niyun picked a bow was similar to mine. Though she acted manly on the outside, she was a sheltered lady on the inside. It wouldn't be until much later that she would overcome her delicate nature. Kim Suha approached her to pat her back. But Chai Niyun hit his hand away fiercely. Kim Suha reluctantly backed away. Leave her be. I'm sure her older brother will come to console her. I said so thoughtlessly. In reality, things would turn out that way. Her older brother would arrive first, then her father would come to clean up everything. But it seemed Chai Niyun took my indifference as an insult. You, you. Geek. Her bloodshot eyes stabbed me. Did she want something or someone to blame? It was understandable. Unlike you Yunha, Chai Niyun was a real lady. Anything but the highest quality food would upset her stomach, and seeing a cockroach or a rat would ruin her mood for the whole day. You. I'll head out first. Kim Suha tried to say something. For some reason, Kim Suha's face was stiff. But ignoring it, I turned. Back. I also needed time to reflect. The Jin's strength was far greater than what I had said. I couldn't understand why. With a single swing, a thin blade cut through the air. But from the tip of the blade, an unidentifiable white magic power undulated, shooting out in all directions and obliterating all monsters. A clean execution. Yun Sung Ah took back her sword and turned around. Her hair fluttered in the gentle breeze. Dozens of ordinary people, who watched her attack, were left speechless. In their eyes, an unshakable respect and admiration could be seen. Seeing the world's most popular hero attack would become a great bar story for a long time. You can rest assured. Vice leader. A coarse voice interrupted Yun Sung Ah's sentence. Yun Sung Ah was slightly surprised. The man who ran over quickly dropped a bombshell. A jin appeared at the National Weapons Museum. What? You should head over a meaty. What? What? But soon, he tilted his head and focused his hearing on the transceiver in his ear. Ah. Yes. What's wrong? Um. Apparently, the jin has been taken care of. Three cadets from Cube happen to be at the museum. Oh? That's great. Who were they? Kim Suha, Chai Niyun, and... Uck. Before he could finish, a violent gale rose up, blinding him momentarily. By the time he opened his eyes back up, the hero who had decimated dozens of monsters was gone. Running at the speed of light, Yun Sung Ah arrived at the museum. An ordinary-looking man walked out of the museum at the same time. Seeing Yun Sung Ah, 
The man flinched for a moment before quickly bowing down. Hello. Does he know me? Well, there aren't many who don't. Though something felt out of place, Yun Sung Ah greeted the man without much thought. Ah, yes, did something happen inside? Yes, a jin appeared. He just died though, I see. And you are? At Yun Sung Ah's question, the man replied with a grin. I'm a cadet. At his word, Yun Sung Ah was taken aback. She finally figured out the previous strange feeling she had. Though she was acting humble, Yun Sung Ah was one of the most popular heroes in Korea. As a result, most cadets would freeze in front of her or act nervous at the very least. Oh, I see. Then, I'm off. The ones you're looking for should be inside. But the man who introduced himself as Kim Hajin walked away smiling without a hint of nervousness. Yun Sung Ah observed him walking away for a moment. Who is he? Quite daring for a young cadet. But Kim Hajin? I wasn't familiar with the name. How did he know who I came for? Thinking so, Yun Sung Ah sauntered into the museum. The inside of the museum was a mess. The tiled floors were full of signs of battle, and an ominous magic power still lingering in the air proved the existence of the jinn. Ni Yun. At that moment, a vehement voice rang out from the entrance. Yun Sung Ah turned back. There, she saw a middle-aged man looking around the museum with reddened eyes. It was someone she knew. Chai Ni Yun's father, Chai Shin Hyuk. Chai Shin Hyuk Si? Vice Leader Yun Sung Ah? Ah. You must be busy lately. It's been a while. Should we go together? Pointing deeper into the museum, Yun Sung Ah smiled. A curved telephone pole and a car sticking out of a window, in this strange place that couldn't possibly be normal, I managed to grab a bench for myself. Heroes were busily running around cleaning up the situation, but I was in a bit of a panic myself. The story had changed. If this world was the world within my novel, this couldn't have happened. Of course, an oddity known as Kim Hajin had already intervened, but his role had been minimal. Everything had also been fine until now. I most certainly had not done anything that could have affected. Suddenly, a streak of thought flashed across my mind. Ah, that's right. I had forgotten until now. I wasn't the sole author of this story. To be precise, this world wasn't the novel I wrote. To be even more precise, this world was the remake version of my novel. There's a co-author. After thinking that far, an unknown feeling of emptiness rose up within me. Why was I so relaxed this entire time? Live a comfortable life? No, that was impossible from the start. Just like when someone stopped me from modifying invariable stats, that someone wouldn't let that happen. Wing, at that moment, the laptop vibrated like a phone. When I opened it, I saw a message. Flaw. There is no semblance of danger for the main character and others. If the story continues this way, the readers would become bored thinking, the main character will win anyways, this crazy motherfa. No danger? Of course, there was no danger. Readers didn't like extreme danger. This thoughtless amateur. However, there was another line below. Makeshift solution. Even if things become a mess, increase the power of antagonists. Chapter 13. Change. 3. At around 1 p.m. today, a group of monsters appeared in Seoul, leaving 500 wounded and 7 dead. A new anchor was reporting on today's incident. With a deep sigh, Chai Shin Hyuk stroked the bedridden. Patient. Her pale complexion seemed to stab her father's heart. Though she was an adult who would soon become a hero, Chai Niyun was still like a little girl to Chai Shin Hyuk. According to the investigation, the monster group was led by the intermediate rank grade 1 monster, Beast Insider. This man-sized, badger-shaped monster has never before appeared in Korea. The association believes that the monster was brought in by a third party, and has set out on a search. Hmm. At that moment, Chai Niyun opened her eyes. Chai Shin Hyuk immediately shot up and called for a doctor. You're awake. How are you feeling? Fine. Chai Niyun raised her feeble body. A doctor came running in to check her pulse, but Chai Niyun pushed him away with a smile. I'm fine, dad. Really? Of course, I'm not injured. Didn't the doctor tell you? I, I did. The doctor spoke up inadvertently. Chai Shin Hyuk was a powerful figure who had the country's economy in his palm. 
he knew being on this man's bad side would only make his life more difficult. She seems fine, so you can go now. Yes, sir. The doctor hurriedly ran out. Looking at the closing door, Chai Niyun spoke briefly. Dad. Hmm? Chai Shin Hyuk replied kindly. About Opa. Her low-spirited voice evoked the dark past he wanted to forget. Remembering his son always caused a sharp pain in his heart. With a gentle smile, Chai Shin Hyuk held his daughter's hand. What's wrong? Can I go see him when I'm discharged? I'm on a sick leave anyway, right? Of course you can. Chai Shin Hyuk agreed easily. Chai Niyun leaned her head against her father's shoulder and recalled what happened earlier in the day. The jin from the museum, the black hand that strangled her, and a voice that mentioned her older brother. At that point, Chai Niyun's fury revived. Dad, by the way. Chai Niyun's tone was dark. Her voice carried a heavy emotion. Chai Shin Hyuk asked worriedly. What's up? No, it's nothing. Suddenly, she began to loathe someone from the bottom of her heart. But she couldn't tell her father how she felt. She thought back to when her stomach was boiling from being poisoned by the jin's magic power. Even while she was writhing in pain, she could hear that man's voice clearly. I'm sure her older brother will come console her. That man had mentioned her brother. Four years ago, on the day the sky fell, everyone in the world found out. So she didn't have the time to be sad. After that day, her brother's name was etched deep inside her heart, and he became an untouchable subject to her. As a cadet at Hero Academy, that man should have known about her brother's state. Even so, he had mentioned her brother in that way. Chai Niyun suppressed the fury rising from her heart and engraved the man's name in her head. Kim Hajin, Kim Hajin. From this day, Chai Niyun would no longer forget this name. Soul's sky was dyed in an orange hue. The movement of the sun was no different than usual, but the scene reflected by the setting sun could only be described as a pandemonium. Pieces of asphalt littered the road, while a child was crying under a telephone pole snapped in half. Ambulances traveled back and forth, carrying wounded people or corpses. Although the situation had been taken care of by the dispatched heroes, the aftermath of chaos still remained. Kim Suha, Kim Hajin. We heard the story. Kim Suyuk was waiting at the portal connecting Seoul and Cube. We will ask for details later, so go back and rest for now. Agents will take care of the rest. For the record, agents were different than heroes. Agents were those who graduated from Agent Military Academy but didn't enter Cube. In other words, they were not combatants. Most of them had abilities that were very useful in day-to-day -day life. For example, I saw a man on my way back, who was fixing the broken asphalt with a wave of a hand. Um, instructor. Chai Niyun is. Kim Suha asked, to which Kim Suyu gave a short reply. She's taking a sick leave. She's with her family right now. Yes, understood. Kim Suha didn't ask any more questions. Go back. Other cadets seemed to have helped out with the unexpected emergency, as even Yu Yunha looked tired. One by one, we trudged to the portal. The odd sensation enveloping my body didn't feel interesting anymore. After a short sigh, I found myself back at Cube. Without any words, the group walked to the dorm. Hey! On our way back to dorm 1, after the girls went ahead, Kim Suha stopped me. What? Why did you say that? Say what? To Chai Niyun. What was he talking about all of the sudden? When I furrowed my brows in incomprehension, Kim Suha suddenly became a bit more hostile. Why did you bring up her older brother? In such a condescending way too. What do you mean? I didn't mean much by. At that instant, I swallowed my words. This world had a co-author. My setting wasn't the only setting at play. Something had to have changed. What about her older brother? At my question, Kim Suha stopped his steps. Gritting his teeth, he glared at me. It's something every cadet knows, but you're going to pretend you don't know? What? No, I really don't. Whatever. We can talk about it later. For now. Kim Suha quickly walked past me and got on the elevator. Under his glaring eyes were thick dark circles. Since he used that ability, he needed to crash. Since my room was on the first floor, I didn't need to get on the elevator. The moment I sat down on my couch, I turned on my smartwatch. An internet window popped up in the air. This world's main search engine was neighbor one. 
the interface was no different than what I was used to, so getting used to it posed no problem. First, I looked up Chai Niyun. What Kim Suha said and how Chai Niyun reacted were indeed strange. Equals equals equals, Chai Niyun, hero cadet, family, father, Chai Shin Hyuk, older brother, Chai Jin Yun education, agent military academy rank 4, currently attending hero military academy, cube, equals 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 so what's the problem? Chai Jin Yun, it's not like he was dead or missing, so why were they so worked up? Even as I tilted my head, I looked up Chai Jin Yun. At the same time, my jaws dropped. Huh? Chai Shin Hyuk's son, Chai Jin Yun, in critical condition from a Jin attack, the Jin suppression operation, Fire Flake, succeeds. However, the rookie hero, Chai Jin Yun, falls in a coma, there were headlines I couldn't understand. What? Jin suppression operation, Fire Flake. I knew what it was. It was the first operation that gave Chai Jin Yun fame. By leading this operation to a success and rescuing three comrades in the process, he would have been promoted to an intermediate rank hero. Chai Ni Yun, who was only 13 at the time, would have always bragged about her older brother who suddenly rose to fame. No, that was how things should have been. What the hell is going on? Unable to take everything in, I took out my laptop. If there was a hint, the laptop had to have it. Thanks to your high luck, Light Bullet deals critical damage to Dog of Lucius. With great luck, your understanding of the light attribute increases. With extreme luck, you absorb part of the magic power emitted by the Light Bullet. Your magic power increases by 0.03 points, you dealt critical damage to a more powerful enemy. The skill, Sharpshooter of Reversal, has been added to your Gift Master Sharpshooter. Your SP increases by 131. There were many pleasant alerts, but I turned them all off. I looked for my settings book. No, I didn't need to look for it. This settings book was something I wrote. Since what happened today wasn't part of my setting, looking for my settings book wouldn't do anything. However, I had received a message on my laptop. Chai Jin Yun, in the original story, he was Chai Ni Yun's reliable older brother and Kim Su Ha's trustworthy helper. However, it has been judged that the main character has too many helpers, and thus this setting was changed, modified setting, in his first mission as a hero four years ago, Chai Jin Yun receives a devil's branding and falls into a coma. Currently, he is a devil's seed, note, modified settings will be provided as messages once the target, Kim Hajin, becomes aware of it, without realizing that my mouth was open, I stared at the screen in a daze. By the time my saliva dropped on the laptop, I barely managed to eke out a voice. Fucking. And that was all I could say. If this message was true, this was an extremely serious problem. Devil's Seed was something that only appeared in the latter half of the novel. If it sprouted, the current Kim Suha was nowhere strong enough to stop it. A master rank hero would be able to stop it, but most master ranks had left the secular world. Even if high rank heroes were dispatched, a few of them would surely be sacrificed. That couldn't happen. Their strength was needed in the novel's latter parts. In other words, everything would go awry if this devil's seed sprouted. Of course, things had already gone awry, but it was still to a manageable degree. Then what could I do? There was only one answer, so I didn't need to think for long. He needs to die. Thankfully, the devil's seed had an incubation period. From what I recall, it should be five or six years. Four years had already passed. As quickly as possible, before the devil inside Chai Jin Yun's body woke up, Chai Jin Yun had to be killed. The problem was who? Who should kill him? I couldn't hire an assassin. Even if I offered billions of one, no mercenary was crazy enough to accept a mission to kill a chabel. Not to mention, because the devil's seed was undetectable, no one would believe me even if I told the truth. In fact, I was sure I would just be treated as a crazy person. He needed to die. There was only one way this could be done. I have to kill him. With a deep sigh, I closed my eyes. Chai Jin Yun was a reliable friend and helper for Kim Su Ha, though he was an idiot when it came to his sister. But in this world, he had become a character that had to be killed. While this complete change was shocking, I didn't have the peace of mind to be shocked. Inside the video, the man in question was talking to Kim Suha. When the Jin appeared, 
He backed off stealthily and simply spectated the fight. But seeing the Kim Suha being pushed back, he went into hiding and began to make strange actions. He unloaded his gun, leaving only a single bullet behind. Then, he began to tap on thin air. After about a minute, he loaded the bullet in his gun and headed to battle. What happened next was even more mysterious. His gun exploded at the same time he fired his gun, while a brilliant white light dyed the surroundings. Because of the light, the camera froze up for three seconds. By the time the screen came back to normal, everything was settled. Hmm. Most people assumed the attack to be Kim Suha's, but Yun Sung Ah was doubtful. No matter how she thought about it, the light had to have come from the man's attack. Even Kim Suha admitted in his report, Kim Hajin covered me. Kim Hajin. I remember him now. He's the cadet who chose a gun. So there was a reason he chose it. Thud. At that moment, the door shot open. Startled, Yun Sung Ah turned to the door. There, she was the association's executive, Aileen. Though she had a small build and was only 153 centimeters tall, Yun Sung Ah knew that a 10 meters tall giant resided inside her. Unfortunately for her, Aileen was glaring at her with terrifying eyes. Yun Sung Ah's face paled as she jumped up in horror. Un, Uni? I knew you were here. Come out. Ah, wait, Uni. I can explain. I can. Shut up and follow me. Yun Sung Ah didn't want to follow her out even if it cost her life. But her body moved on its own. It was Aileen's one-of-a-kind gift, spirit speech. Of course, as powerful as it was, the price she had to pay was equally great. There was a high risk of magic power recoil and her underdeveloped body was also a price she had to pay. But still. Uni, I'm a hero too. Please, give me some face. Her ability was honestly too much of a cheat. Only the association's heroes are authorized to come in here. I know. I'll leave on my own, so let me go. You better hurry before I throw you out the window. In the end, Yun Sung Ah was chased out of the record room. You have two choices. One, be punished. Two, help me with something. I'm sorry. Please, let me go this one time. I don't want to do either. Only the video Yun Sung Ah was watching was left to play in the emptied room. Save me. Tuesday's combat training, labyrinth exploration, inside a dark cave created by Cube, Yu Yunha, me, and the rest of Team 5 were in the middle of our combat training. Ho Zung Si, Hazuki Si, can you see something? Yu Yunha asked with a frown. We were in an artificial dungeon designed after a dark labyrinth. The goal of the training was to break through the labyrinth filled with undead monsters and to reach the labyrinth's center. Because the mist was created through darkness mana, even heroes found it difficult to light up the cave. No, I can't. Me neither. Jin Hozung and Azuki answered. TSK. Yu Yunha clicked her tongue and didn't ask any more. I was still treated as an invisible person, even after I gifted her a coke. Shaking my head, I spoke, I can see. Huh? Really? Jin Hozung and Azuki were surprised, but Yu Yunha ignored me. I said, I can see. Annoyed at her attitude, I spoke loudly to the back of her head. I can see through the dark. At that instant, Yu Yunha turned back quickly with glaring eyes. However, she was facing Jin Hozung, not me. Stop fooling around. Insulted out of the blue, Jin Hozung was taken aback, while I retorted casually. I'm just saying, you're going to fall if you go that way. What nonsense, kayak. Yu Yunha missed her footing at just the right time. As she began to plummet jumped in and grabbed her arm. Yu Yunha clutched my shoulder with trembling hands. Kuum. Downwards, I, after climbing back up using my body as a rope, Yu Yona let out a dry cough as though nothing happened. Looks like you aren't lying. How can you see? I have good eyes. It was thanks to my gift. Thousand mile eyes weren't hindered by distance or obstacles. That, of course, included lighting. Good, you should at least be able to do that much. So, where should we go? Just follow me. Oh how reliable Jin Hozung placed his hand on my shoulder as though we were friends. Taking his hand off, I walked forward. Things were pretty easy from that point. I just had to walk, dodging what I could dodge and notifying Yu Yunha what I couldn't. If the unavoidable enemy was a fluid-bodied spirit, 
Yu Yunha's merciless whip took care of it, and if it was an undead, Jin Hozung and Hazuki took care of it. My stamina had increased, thanks to working out, so there was no problem there. Though not having to run played a big part, this particular training was a breeze. And now, I could see the result with my own eyes. We managed to reach the center of the labyrinth. There, we only saw eight people. In other words, we scored third place. Yu Yanha? Hey, Zhang Hak. Shin Zhang Hak, who was sitting on a rock acting needlessly cool, called Yu Yanha. She ran towards him with an amiable smile. How she treated Shin Zhang Hak was clearly different than how she treated me. Over here. Kim Soo Yuk, who was waiting, read out our time without paying attention to Yu Yunha's touching reunion. Team 5. 48 minutes 10 seconds. Third place. At the same time, Jin Hozung and Azuki cheered. Who? It's all thanks to you. You really have great eyes you do, you do. For now, I sat on the ground with them. Yu Yunha had already left for Shin Zhang Hak, and Kim Su Ha was sleeping on the ground. It seemed he was still suffering from releasing his ability at the museum. I also relaxed. In about five minutes, another team arrived. I wasn't surprised with who it was. Sharpshooters generally had good eyes. It's Niyun. Seeing Chai Niyun's silhouette from the darkness, Yu Yunha approached, pretending to be happy. For some reason, Chai Niyun was covered in dust. It seemed she fell into a trap. Walking towards my direction, she rested her eyes on me and paused. Her cold eyes seemed to pierce through me. Niyun? She didn't respond to Yu Yunha's call. Ignoring her completely, Chai Niyun marched towards me and asked suddenly, What was your time? It was a short question. I gave back a short reply. 48 minutes. Chai Niyun clenched her teeth. Sharpshooters often acted as a team's pathfinder. Chai Niyun rightfully thought I guided my team. Looks like even you have something you're good for. It was a clear provocation. I hesitated to reply. Should I strike back? I did have a good reason to do so. The novel's antagonists had become stronger, so it was necessary for our side. Though the current Chai Niyun might not be on my side. Anyways, it was necessary for the leading characters to also get stronger. To do that, Chai Niyun needed to quickly abandon the bow. In this world, her potential was second only to Kim Suha. But with a bow, her potential would be wasted. I guess you're right, but I still didn't find the need to respond to her provocation. Between negative motivation and positive motivation, Chai Niyun was more affected by the former according to my setting. However, the agent of the motivation was important. A weakling like me provoking her most likely wouldn't have much meaning. Now wasn't the time. Furthermore, I was confident that it wouldn't be long until I surpassed Chai Niyun in archery. I just had to wait until then. Humph. Chai Niyun seemed bored by my retreat, as she returned with a snort. I shook my head. At that moment, my eyes met Yu Yunha's. For some reason, her eyes carried a slight hint of interest that hadn't existed before. Humph. But soon, she walked away with the same disdainful snort as Chai Niyun. Chapter 15. For growth, too, today's combat training came to an end. Though I was exhausted, I still had to go to the academic club. After that, I had to do my daily workout. Thinking about the agony of my daily life, I became depressed. If I knew this would happen, I would have put more points into perseverance. In any case, I was currently heading to the academic club's club room. Perhaps because this was the usual path she took or because we had a similar personality, I could see Yu Yunha in front of me. Yu Yunha herself didn't see me and continued walking. When she arrived at the club room, she stood in front of the door and took out a hand mirror. She lightly checked to see whether or not anything was on her. But at that exact moment, her eyes met mine. What a coincidence, right? Ignoring me, Yu Yunha walked in. I also followed. Yu Yunha sat on a sunny seat, while I took the dark corner seat. Yun Hyuk, the club president, was already standing on the podium. Wearing his glasses, he seemed to be organizing today's lecture notes. Not long afterward, 43 first years arrived along with 20 upperclassmen. At 7 on the dot, Yun Hyuk began the first academic club lecture. Good evening, everyone. The weather's starting to get. Any useless talk went into one ear and left from the other. Today, 
we will discuss monster's vital points. As I'm sure you all know, the location of a monster's vital point is an important piece of information in defeating a monster. You can see how critical this information can be by looking at Senior Seo Yangji. By reaching the pinnacle of this ability, she has reached top 2000 on hero rankings. A hologram of Seo Yangji's specs popped up on the projection screen. A hero's specs were summarized into strength, dexterity, durability, constitution, and magic power. Other than dexterity, Seo Yangji's specs were all under intermediate rank, but her dexterity was at the master rank. For the record, only 300 heroes in the world had master rank dexterity. Senior Seo Yangji even hunted a high rank monster by herself. As he said, Seo Yangji was a well known character in this world. Though she had an introverted personality, I was sure I would meet her since she played an important role in the story. But don't think monsters' vital points are the same as a human's. For us, the eyes, heart, and head serve as vital points, but that isn't always the case for monsters. To add on, a monster's vital point became stranger the higher ranked it was. Now, let's take a look at an example. In an instant, a hologram of a monster appeared on the screen. Though it looks similar to a mountain tiger, its giant body, bloodshot eyes, and ferocious teeth clearly indicated that it wasn't a normal tiger. This monster is called the mountain tyrant. It can be classified anywhere from intermediate rank to high rank. As one of the first monsters to have appeared during Outcall, it has been known for 50 years, but its vital point hasn't been discovered yet. With that, Yun Hyuk paused and made a meaningful smile. At least, that's how things are in public. In reality, even if an individual or a guild knew its vital point, they wouldn't reveal it to the public. They likely weren't allowed to either. He was right. In this world, information was an industry. There were large corporations solely focused on gathering and researching information on monsters, and in a smaller scale, private detectives and detective agencies gathered and sold information. As such, leaking such information was heavily penalized. Of course, requiring this information to be public would greatly help humanity fight against monsters, but the power of capitalism suppressed any debates on this topic. Now, where do you think this mountain tyrant's vital point is? Yun Hyuk gave Yu Yunha a meaningful look. A mountain tyrant's vital point, Yu Yunha likely had no clue. Even I only created the setting and never used it. There just wasn't a chance for the main character to go tiger hunting. As I thought, she didn't seem to know. Seeing as how she was fiddling with her hair and looking around, it seemed she was ashamed for not knowing the answer. Would anyone like to guess? I, of course, knew the answer. It was a good opportunity to stand out but I didn't raise my hand. Yun Hyuk was acting like he did. Though his pretentious face irritated me, I wanted to see what was scheming. I. At that moment, a girl raised her hand. I was surprised. Who the heck was that? Is it his nose? She guessed with a flushed face. She was just an extra who fell for Yun Hyuk. The academic club continued for two hours. Unexpectedly, there was a lot to learn like the vital points of monsters compatibility between attributes, and the difference between a magic and a spell. I learned in detail about things I had lazily explained in my novel, all the while I watched cute cadets discuss the topic. We have an after-party planned at a nearby restaurant. It'll be great if you can come. Anyways, after the club ended, Yun Hyuk announced that there was an after-party at a nearby restaurant. For some reason, Yu Yun Ha seemed interested in going. Feeling a bit worried, I followed her. I knew she wasn't the type to participate in things like after parties. Hey, you going? I approached her casually and asked. He female. She didn't respond. Thinking it was because of the way I talked, I asked again. Are you going? She ignored me again. This time, I asked with even more decorum and propriety. Are you also going to the after party, Yunha si? Only then did you Yunha respond with a faint nod. Why? Aren't you busy? TSK. This fool. That was what Yu Yunha's eyes were saying. Why are you going? Aren't you curious about the mountain tyrant's vital point? Huh? Oh, I get it now. Public information on the mountain tyrant was scant to say the least. Not only did its strength vary greatly from individual to individual, it also lived in an extremely remote place. Although the mountain tyrant's leather sold for a hefty price, 
It was hard to plan a hunt when one couldn't be sure of the efficient number of people to bring. Yu Yunha was the successor of a major guild, so the reason Yun Hyuk acted like he knew the mountain tyrant's vital point was this. Because I didn't write my novel from Yu Yunha's point of view, I didn't exactly write out how Yun Hyuk managed to coax Yu Yunha. It seemed guild was the keyword for luring her out. Yu Yunha had a guild lineage. Her clan had risen to power during outcall 50 years ago, thanks to the massive success of her family's first generation head. Her family was still a successful hero clan, but Yu Yunha had a bit of an inferiority complex. Compared to a true noble clan, she felt her family was lacking. This was why she saw Shin Jong Hak favorably, and it was also why she was overly obsessed with face and decorum. The mountain tyrant's vital point? Was this a good chance to make an investment? There was a lot to gain from keeping a cordial relationship with Yu Yunha. With great proficiency in handling businesses and at calculating profitability, she was destined to become the king of Seoul in the future. I'm not curious. I already know. What? Yu Yunha asked again as she furrowed her brows. She looked thoroughly annoyed on top of being in disbelief. At that moment, I made my decision. Using this information that would be publicized one day, I would draw Yu Yunha's interest and instill a sense of mystery into her. Considering the SP and additional benefits I would gain from it, it was an acceptable trade. I lowered my voice to a whisper and relayed the information to her in a serious tone. The mountain tyrant's vital point is on the heel of its hind leg. What nonsense are you? There's a blue mark on its hind leg's heel. But its DNA determines whether it's the right hind leg or the left. That's probably why its vital point hasn't been discovered until now. I was the one who created the setting for the mountain tyrant. I was inspired by the story of Achilles' heel when I made the setting. It was unlikely that this setting was changed, as tiny details seemed to be left untouched. The mountain tyrant's body is tough, but this blue mark on its heel is the only place that's soft. That's the mountain tyrant's vital point. If you strategize around it, it should be easy to rob it of its two hind legs. The value of this information had to be tens of millions of one. But considering my current credibility, it likely wouldn't be over 101. Nuthead. As expected, Yu Yunha gave a disdainful look as though she was looking at an insect. She then began to walk away. I followed after her. It's true. Believe me. Would you believe me if our positions were swapped? I, of course, wouldn't have believed her. It's your choice whether to believe me or not. I hoped she would. Hey. At that moment, Yun Hyuk suddenly cut in between Yu Yunha and me. Shoving me back slightly, he asked, Don't you think you're being too pushy? Because of this cheesy son of a bitch's height, I had to look up at him. But instead, I turned to you. Yunha. Am I bothering you? Yes. Hey. She gave a cold-hearted reply. I grew angry at Yun Hyuk's mocking laugh. By the way, are you also coming to the after party? He spoke condescendingly. I shook my head. I'm not. Then don't bother other people too much. Um, Yunha see? However, Yu Yunha had already begun to walk away. Hey! I returned what I received. With a distorted face, Yun Hyuk chased after Yu Yunha. I, on the other hand, simply watched them leave. I gave Yu Yunha valuable information, but I didn't know whether she would use it or forget about it. In the case of the former, I would gain a likely ally, and in the case of the latter, nothing would happen. In any case, I had nothing to lose. On a dark winter night, Yu Yunha was deep in thought as she tapped on her desk with her pen. Tomorrow, Essence of the Straight Guild's elite team would go out to hunt a mountain tyrant. They had secretly purchased information about a lone mountain tyrant living in Kumgong Mountain, and they had already confirmed its size with a scout. It was estimated to be high intermediate rank grade 1. The strength of its pelt reached Promentium, A. Eh? tough or found after outcall. As such, the guild would gain an astronomical income if the hunt was successful. But Yu Yunha was worried about one thing. It wasn't for the safety of the elite hunting team. The current vice leader of Essence of the Strait held too much power. She felt her seat as the guild's successor threatened. Right, Yu Yunha's worry was about this. To succeed the guild without a problem, she had to start making contributions. In the end, Yu Yunha turned on her smartwatch. Using its communication functionality, she made a phone call. Soon, the receiver picked up, 
and a hologram screen popped up. Um, uncle? Yes, young lady. On the screen was Kim Songo. He was a veteran in his 40s, who was her father's most trusted right arm. Ever since she was a child, Yu Yunha treated him like her real uncle. What's wrong? Though she made the call, Yu Yunha was too embarrassed to say anything. A blue mark on its heel? You can disable both of its hind legs by attacking it? Just what was I doing, fooled by that crazy's nonsense? Um, I'm saying this just in case. But the possibility wasn't zero and it didn't seem like it would hurt to try. Though it came from that crazy nut job, there had to be a reason he was so confident. Justifying herself, Yu Yunha caught her breath. Yes, young lady? Um, I know it sounds crazy, but... Closing her eyes and clenching her fists, she spoke. If things are looking rough, try looking at its hind legs heels. Hind legs heels? Kim Songo furrowed his brows. Yu Yunha knew what that meant. But if she could be of help, and if this information was real. Yes, its hind legs. Heels. Either on its left or right heel, there should be. Well, I'm not sure if it's true, but. Yu Yunha continued while risking being embarrassed. If there is a blue mark there, try aiming for that place. Chapter 16. For growth, 3. In the middle of the night when owls came out to cry, I came back from working out and collapsed on my bed. Ever since I came to this world, I found it hard to fall asleep. My body was tired, but countless random thoughts emerged in my head preventing me from falling asleep. How could I survive in this world? What actions should I take? Should I be a supporter who secretly helps the leading characters? Or should I become a villain and execute the evil side from the inside like in the noir movie I saw? Then, I got suddenly curious about my current stats. I looked for my laptop. Equals 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 stats variable stats. Strength 1.735. Stamina 1.845. Speed 2.15. Perception 2.605. Vitality 1.65. Magic power 1.3, equals 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 sure enough, my stats were on the rise. All stats other than magic power had surpassed an average adult male's, 1.5, and my perception could be said to have surpassed what an ordinary person was capable of having. But I was still far from ready from entering a field. I needed money, it wouldn't be long until the Pack Horse Master Guild would go public. Suddenly, a thought flashed through my mind. Indeed, Going to the field was the most honest way of making money. I had been putting it off because my stats were lacking, but after thinking about it carefully, there was a way around it. I could make up for my lacking stats by using the laptop to strengthen my weapon. Just like Kim Suha, who would later use a single holy sword to sever a mountain. It seemed like the quickest way to become stronger. But it was also a huge waste of SP. I currently had a training gun provided by Cube and 380 SP I got from destroying my potential friendship with Chai Niyun. Now, suppose I also had the famous handgun, Desert Eagle. Even if I invested all of my SP into strengthening my training gun, it would likely only come to equal the Desert Eagle. In other words, SP was more efficient when it modified weapons with a more powerful base. Performance. Hmm. Speaking of the Desert Eagle, I suddenly became curious. It was the only firearm I had in my setting. Without getting up from my bed, I turned on my smartwatch and entered a weapons dealer website. Essential Armory. It was an armory operated by the essence of the straight guild. Since weapons above the artifact grade were sold in auctions, Essential Armory was the most popular website for factory manufactured weapons. Welcome to Essential Armory, as expected of the most popular weapons dealer website. It was well designed. The homepage showed off new items, while the top bar had categories such as sword, spear, bow, and rapier. Perhaps because mercenaries often use the website, it also had a good selection of guns. I clicked on, category, gun. There were different types of guns such as handgun, assault rifle, and sniper rifle. For now, a handgun suited me best since it didn't hinder my movements. The Desert Eagle seemed to be a popular choice among handguns, as I quickly found it. Equals 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 Desert Eagle. Feel the transcendental power. Built into the Desert Eagle is a magic amplification device that boosts the power of magic bullets. Because of its huge recoil, 
the Desert Eagle is recommended only for the most proficient sharpshooters. Weight, 3.5948 kg, 1.2938 kg with weight reduction magic effect added, length, 333 mm identification and contract required to purchase. Equals 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 Desert Eagle. Its picture on the website looked much more beautiful than the original design. The barrel had an elegant platinum color, while a majestic eagle was inscribed on the grip. While looking like a piece of art, this weapon boasted a heavy weight and a bulky size. Just from a glance, I could tell how powerful it was. There was just one problem. It's too expensive. It was expensive. Its base price was 20 million won, and the price doubled when I clicked on a checkbox that said full attachments. I needed the weapon to make money, so buying it almost seemed counterproductive. A hue. I tried to think about what to do, but my brain refused to function. My consciousness was foggy, and I felt drowsy. It seemed sleep would come to me soon. I turned off the smartwatch without hesitation and entrusted myself to my instincts. Thinking about this could wait until tomorrow. When I opened my eyes back up, it was Wednesday. Bright morning light shone through the curtain. It was an unpleasant light no matter how many times I looked at it. Another exhausting day had begun. Phew. Each guild had a different collection of data, if I sold them the information they didn't have. No, this wasn't the best idea. In the first place, it took five years for an information broker to build up his reputation. It also didn't seem like a good idea to disrupt the world's balance just to make some money. Now, let's continue after a little break. Before I noticed, break time rolled around. I immediately turned on my smartwatch to enter Essential Armory once more, but I had received an unexpected message. Excuse me, I was familiar with the sender's name. Rank 7, Yu Yunha. Because smartwatches of cadets were connected to the cube's intranet, it was possible to message other cadets without knowing their exact contact address. This was the first time I was using this feature. Yu Yunha was sitting in the front row. After giving the back of her head a quick glance, I replied to her message. What? What are you? What nonsense was this? What do you mean? She didn't reply for a while. I wondered where this was coming from, then remembered what I told her before. I peeked at the time. It was 1 p.m. I gave her the information yesterday and she already confirmed it was true? Ah, is it about that? I'm surprised you believed me, what? So, wasn't I right? In truth, I was also dying to know whether the Mountain Tyrant setting was unchanged. If this unknown co-author wanted to change everything I knew, I would have a tough time ahead of me. Yes, phew. Thankfully, it seemed that wasn't the case. I breathed a sigh of relief. How did you know? You think I'd tell you? Yu Yunha's shoulder twitched. Immediately afterwards, she returned a short reply. No, a smirk emerged on my face. When I was about to end the conversation, I remembered something. Desert Eagle, the elegant and dignified bird of prey. I had almost forgotten about it. The reason I gave the information to her was for times like this. Coincidentally, Essential Armory was operated by Yu Yunha's guild, Essence of the Strait. Anyways, if you benefited from the information I gave you, I'd like to ask for a favor, Yu Yunha suddenly turned around. As though she had kept an eye on my seat, she knew exactly where I was. Though her gaze was still sharp, it seemed to hold less weight. How should I put it? Right, she looked like a big bag of money. Chapter 17 For growth, 4, what do you want? I knew Yu Yunha would agree. She was the type who couldn't stand one-sided favors. Now, I wondered I should ask for. Asking for money didn't feel right. It was Yu Yunha I was talking about, but she was still a minor. She likely couldn't freely spend tens of millions of won. It's simple. I need a weapon, after sending her the above message, I sent her the link to Essential Armory's Desert Eagle. Yu Yunha looked at the link I sent her and looked back up at me. She didn't seem to have any hostility. I think it's pretty cheap, I understand, great, she agreed. Is it possible to get it by tomorrow? The quicker it was, the more money I would make. Even if tomorrow was too difficult, I hope to get it by the end of the week. Yes, I'll take care of it, surprisingly, she replied without hesitation, even though her parents should still be in charge of guild work. I was impressed by her decisiveness. Get back to your seats. 
The break ended at just the right time, as the old professor resumed class after drinking some water. Wednesday's theory class ended. And at 3 p.m., anti-personnel training began. In a fairly large training field, each cadet met with others they promised to spar. Meanwhile, I looked for the instructor pitifully. Hey! A sharp voice stabbed my ear from the back. It had to be calling me. I turned around and instantly froze. Chai Niyun was glaring at me with terrifying eyes. She asked, spar with me. The hostility in her tone bordered on killing intent. Gulp. I swallowed a mouthful of saliva. Like the saying, a word causes a debt worth a thousand gold tails, I had made a terrifying enemy with a sentence. Indeed, Chai Niyun was too dangerous of a person to have as an enemy. In order to live a peaceful life, I had to mend our relationship even at the cost of kneeling and begging. But looking at Chai Niyun, I fell in thought. Would she be able to forgive me for my rash insult just because I apologized? Seeing me silent, Chai Niyun pointed at my gun and spoke. Your gun. Take it out. The first training gun broke when I fought the Jin. This was a new one. I looked down at my holster, then back up at Chai Niyun. I don't want to. You scared? These two words carried a great echo, causing the eyes on the training field to fall on us. Um. How should I act in front of Chai Niyun? Without a doubt, the incident I was clueless about was well known among all cadets. The original Kim Chundong should have known about it too. So if I apologize now, it might seem like an even greater insult. No. Furthermore, it might be better for me to remain a bad guy to Chai Niyun. My first and foremost goal and the reason I worked so hard without resting was all to kill her older brother within a certain amount of time. Even if I mended my relationship with Chai Niyun and even became friends, my actions would only leave her with a cruel sense of betrayal and hatred. I'm afraid you might get hurt. This thing uses real bullets, you see. Immediately, the weight of the atmosphere changed. Chai Niyun clenched her bow. I could see the amount of force she put in through the veins popping out of her hand. I don't think your bullets will hurt me even if they hit. Chai Niyun forcefully suppressed her anger and retorted with a cold sneer. My response was simple. You won't get hurt. You'll die instead. Ha! Say that again, punk. Chai Niyun approached me up close. She looked like she would explode at any moment. She was technically 165 while I was 174 but she seemed a lot bigger for some reason. Really, who do you think you are? The atmosphere turned for the worse and more spectators gathered to watch the fight. At that moment, Chai Niyun, get back. The instructor stepped in. I breathed a sigh of relief, thankful that she came before it was too late. Chai Niyun turned towards the instructor. Why should I? Before he gets a gun for sparring, no one can spar with Kim Hajin Cadet. But I don't mind. I mind. Why? Failure to heed an instructor's order will be met with disciplinary action. An instructor's words were absolute. Chai Niyun clenched her teeth with a wrong look. But in the end, she gave me a final glare before leaving. The spectators also dispersed and went back to their training. Everything had returned to normal. Take your gun out. The instructor spoke as she wrapped her hands in bandages. Her name. Park Yun Ah, was it? I asked the instructor. Does a gun for sparring even exist? How the hell would I know? Crack, crack. The instructor cracked her knuckles and neck in front of me. Now, come. Then with a smile, she gestured with her finger. This person. Did she enjoy this? Thursday was the hunting club's orientation. But since cadets weren't required to go to orientations, I decided to skip it for this week. It was partly to avoid Chai Niyun. But the main reason was to test out the weapon I would receive as quickly as possible. Ah, I can't wait. I was currently at Angel Box, a coffee shop near Seoul. I was waiting for an item at this place. For the record, cadets were able to use portals 5-6 times a month as long as they filled out a form. Time passed by. 5.29 and 55 seconds. 5.29 and 56 seconds. 5.30. At exactly the promised time. The shop's door opened. A man in a black suit and sunglasses walked in with a suitcase. After looking around for a moment, his eyes met mine. I waved my hand happily. The man's expression didn't change. Striding with his long legs, he walked up to me. Kim Hajin-si? Yes, 
That's me. I felt like I knew who this man was. Only one person popped up in my head when I thought about Yu Yunha's attendant, Jin Sekin. The man presumed to be Jin Sekin placed the suitcase on the table without sitting down. Here's the item. Please take a look. Are you in a hurry? You can sit. I pointed at the chair in front of me. Before I received this item, I wanted to do a quick test. Hmm. He sat down without complaint. I took out the laptop I bought from my bag. Yesterday, I made some changes to this laptop. Right, I could use the laptop to modify the laptop itself. Are you doing something? What do you mean? The man tilted his head. Why are you tapping on air? You can't see this? I lifted up my laptop. He looked at me as if I was crazy. I see, I had a bit of a suspicion, but it seemed I was right. Only I could see this laptop. Ha ha, I'm kidding. That was fine with me. I turned the laptop on. The additional setting I put into my laptop was this. When Kim Hajin is within 50 meters of a target with an altered setting, the content and summary of the change will be sent to Kim Hajin's laptop, does not work on targets past a certain level of importance. The reason I added this setting was because I thought it would be more efficient if I was about a change through an objective medium rather than having to notice it and then being told by the co-author. Either because the co-author didn't care or because he encouraged the modification I made, only had to pay 200 SP. A change in setting has been detected, and currently, there was an alert in the laptop as expected. Jin Sekin, his feelings for you Yunha has been deepened. I didn't mind this change. Anyways, I'll take a look now. I opened the suitcase. Click. Click. With an elegant sound, the case opened. A brilliant light erupted from the inside. Wow. Told I, sitting on top of a fancy red velvet was a platinum handgun and a magazine. It was even more beautiful than what I saw in the picture. As promised, it's the Desert Eagle with full attachments and a 60-round magazine of pinnacle-grade magic bullets. Thank you. You can go now. I no longer cared about Jin Second. Using my laptop, I checked my new weapon setting. Equals equals equals, Desert Eagle, high rank, metal attribute, a masterpiece handgun. Contains several added effects. Attack power amplification. 1 tenth low rank weight reduction magic intermediate rank recoil control magic equals 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 magic bullet pinnacle grade null attribute 0.44 make and steel mana bullet with condensed high purity mana attack power 4 tenths equals 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 i felt much better being able to read their descriptions without having to modify the gun or the bullet i felt like i could easily kill a low intermediate rank monster I should also be able to take ether from the devil's nest in Suwon. Then I'll be going. Ah, yes, take care. After sending Jin Second off, I checked the amount of SP I had left. 250. Now, how should I spend this? After leaving the coffee shop, Jin Second contacted Yu Yunha. She asked as soon as she picked up the call. Did you deliver the item? Yes. Was there anything special about him? That's. There wasn't anything special but there was something he found strange. No matter how much he thought about it, the man's demeanor wasn't what a 17-year-old should have. Not to mention, it was almost as if he knew who Jin Sekin was, yes? No. There wasn't anything special in particular. But he couldn't come to a decision with just that short exchange. After all, he was Cube's cadet. Even Yu Yunha had an air of dignity and elegance that didn't suit her age. Yes, I understand. Thank you for your work, Second C. My pleasure. With that, the call ended. Though he wanted to talk a little longer, he decided to be content. Chapter 18. Connections. 1. 170,001. My tone went up at the unexpected price. The portal worker retorted unfazed. Yes. From Seoul to Gangwondo Wanju, it's 170,001. Unlike from Cube to Seoul, going to Seoul to Gangwondo had a price. I bought my card with me, but 170,001 wasn't a small amount to pay, especially now, when I was trying to save money. Um. Customer, there are people waiting in line. The female portal worker gave a cold warning. Looking around, I could indeed see many people waiting in line. Seeing as how they each had a weapon with them, it seemed we had the same objective. Um. Can something be done with this? Before I reluctantly paid the price, 
I showed her my Cube Cadet card. I remembered Kim Suyuk saying something about Cube Cadets having benefits, but because this wasn't a setting I made, I wasn't knowledgeable about the specifics. Who? The portal worker sighed as though she was annoyed but still accepted the card. But in the next moment, her eyes widened and a much brighter voice came back. Ah, you're a cube cadet. Cadets are allowed six free passes per month. Oh really? That's great. Would you like to use one? Yes. The portal worker then took my wrist and stamped a seal. I was genuinely surprised at her complete change in attitude. It seemed being a hero really was one of the best jobs in this world. Thank you. Yes, have a safe trip, Kim Hejin Cadet Nim. The female portal worker had even memorized my name. With a bitter smile, I walked into the portal. Gang Wando Wanju's scenery could be summarized with just a sentence. So many foreigners. Just like in my setting, Wanju was a global city. Although its buildings were limited in height due to the threat of monsters, the city was filled with sturdy modern structures. Foreigners of all skin color walked around with their weapons, while agency employees, who supported them, busily tapped on their tablets. They were likely calculating the price of the day's haul. While different from Seoul and Pusan, it was indeed an unusual scene. We took down a good amount today. How much do I get? Hearing a clumsy Korean, I couldn't help but laugh. English and Korean were this world's shared language. Naturally, this showed Korea's importance and authority in the international community. While this sounded great for Korea, Korea was only a step away from hell. The Korean peninsula endlessly produced new towers and dungeons. The textbook contained several explanations for it. There was one scientific and geological explanation that I couldn't understand, and there was also a more religious explanation that said Korea was blessed or cursed by the heaven. In truth, neither was close to the real reason. In any case, the Korean peninsula's numerous towers and dungeons produced many monsters. Had it not been for heroes who could turn them into marketable resources, Korea would have long been destroyed. However, the nine stars, who were nine of the strongest heroes, had five members who were Korean. One of them even served as Korea's 20th president. Any further explanation wasn't necessary. You killed three hobgoblins, so after taxes and processing fees, it should be about 600,001. Under the tax law, foreigners had to pay more in taxes. Even so, foreign mercenaries and heroes flocked to Korea, because the hunting process was safe enough to make up for the high taxes. If things became dangerous during a hunt, one could simply send out a distress call, and heroes or agents would arrive in less than three minutes. Korea was the only country in the world with such a system. Take this. You'll feel better afterward. It's a troll blood potion. Ah, thank you. Seeing the world my setting created, I walked through the streets. The city was full of interesting things, blacksmith's workshop, potion store, alcohol bar, etc. with shops that looked like they belonged in the Middle Ages operating in modern buildings. It felt like I was in a game world. The sentence, Wanju is a famous tourist city, which I wrote without much thought, seemed to have caused this setting. I continued walking and before I noticed, I was at the entrance of the field. There were many people already waiting nearby. I would have to go to Hamjong province if I wanted to hunt in a quiet place, but Hamjong province was too dangerous for the current me. E excuse me? Just when I was about to enter, someone struck up a conversation. It was a tall, average-looking man with slouched shoulders and circular glasses. I didn't know him. He was likely an agent. Yes? Are you perhaps here to hunt monsters? Are you an agent? Ah, yes, here's my business card. I took the business card for now. I didn't know who he was, but an agent was necessary to sell monsters' bodies. But when I looked at the name and the company logo written on the business card, I doubted my eyes. SH Agent Head Manager, Park Suyuk, Mr. Park Suyuk? Ah, yes, nice to meet you. The man smiled as he tidied up his shabby clothes. Park Suyuk. I knew who he was. Indeed, he looked similar to how I described him in my novel. Park Suyuk should be the most appearing agent in the novel, as SH agent would become Korea's greatest agency. Ha ha, you might not have heard of me. I started this work not too long ago. But for now, he didn't seem to be doing too well. I smiled. 
Connections were one of the most important aspects of life. A person's future was often the result of ill relationships and good relationships one made. As this world was still in its early stage, there were many who were currently weak but would become prosperous in the future. The best way to get close to a famous person was to become friends before that person became famous. SH agent, I don't think I've heard of it before. The only thing that bothered me was that this connection was supposed to be Kim Suha's. But since agents usually had multiple clients, it was probably fine. It feels like a trustworthy name. Ha, ha ha, thank you. Ah, by the way. I took out my laptop naturally and checked for any changes in Park Suyuk's setting. Thankfully, there were none, meaning his extraordinary ability was unchanged. My main weapon is a gun. Is that okay? I don't think why that would be a problem. Gun or sword, mercenary or hunter, it doesn't matter to me. New customers are always welcome. Park Suyuk put his hand out with a bright smile. Eight bullets were loaded in my gun. Each pinnacle grade magic bullet cost about 150,000 won. Since each low rank monster went for 300, 400,000 won, I couldn't use more than one bullet per monster due to agent fee I would have to pay. With that in mind, I walked into the field. Park Suyuk followed me from behind. It seemed he was in a desperate time considering the fact that agents without a vehicle usually waited outside the field. Ah, there's one there. After about 30 minutes of wandering around, we finally encountered a monster. A large body and protruding teeth. It was a low rank grade 9 monster called an iron hog. The iron part of its name wasn't because it was covered in iron, but because its skin was stronger than iron. I think we should ignore that one. When I began to approach it, Park Suyuk held me back. I asked. Why? Yes? Park Suyuk's eyes seemed to say, do I need to explain this too? You can't kill an iron hog with a gun. Even piercing its outer skin will be difficult. But it's expensive. Yes? The price of a monster faithfully followed the law of a free market economy. Monsters like the undead gave no benefits and thus had no value. Consequently, monsters like these were subsidized by the government even if it's expensive. Attacking it isn't a good. You'll just have to wait and see. I took out my desert eagle and aimed it forward. The gun barrel shined under the blazing sun. WW wait just one min. Park Suyuk made a fuss and a fluster, but I didn't hesitate. I pulled the trigger. The bullet shot straight. To the middle of the iron hog's head, and before the hog could even notice it, it tore through its iron-like skin. There was nothing it could do with its brain shot through. It helplessly fell down. Perfect. Both the power of the weapon and my skill were satisfactory. I had struck the iron hog's vital point with pinpoint accuracy. Wow. Next to me, Park Suyuk exclaimed in awe. Oh, and by the way, the setting I added to my desert eagle was simple and effective. Equals equals equals, when a monster is one shot killed by the desert eagle, its attack power is amplified, using low intermediate rank as the standard, 1% attack power increase per kill. Repeated killing of same ranked monsters will slightly lower the amount of attack power increase. Equals 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 by putting in a restriction that required me to put in an effort, I'd added a comparatively good effect for the SP I spent. So? Clean, isn't it? Once again, I felt certain about my choice of weapon. Sniping from afar without getting close, it was the perfect hunting method with low risk and low tension. Ah! That's a great gun. Your sharpshooting is amazing too. Ha ha, I'm flattered. I spoke as I pointed at the iron hog's corpse. So how much will this go for? It looks pretty expensive. Well, iron hogs are already pricey and since this corpse is in such a good condition, even after the fees, it should be at least 600. No, 800,001. Wow. Hold on. Let me store the corpse first. Park Suyuk took out a pouch from his bag. It should be a magical pouch with a space expansion magic. Seeing him struggle to put the hog in the pouch, I grabbed the hog's front leg. I'll help out. Ah, thank you. This is really heavy. But thinking about it now, my strength stat wasn't that high either. Ook, UK, God. Wow, it really is heavy. Aren't you an agent? Should you have known this beforehand? You're right. I'll hold its hind legs. You hold the front. Wait. 
don't we have to carry the pouch around afterward? Ah, uh-uh, don't worry, anything inside the pouch will have its weight cut in half. Only half? I couldn't help but sigh. Indeed, Kim Suha only met Park Suyuk in his third year. Park Suyuk was in a bad state even then, so now. Well, I could only be thankful that he hasn't starved to death. Uck. Ooh. Come on, put more strength into it. Sorry, I didn't have lunch. After an hour of groaning and moaning, we finally managed to stuff the hog in the pouch. Phew. I collapsed on the ground, exhausted. My strength and stamina stat had to have increased with that. It's already seven. Before I noticed, the sun had set and darkness had descended on the field. A fearsome cold enveloped my body. From the looks of it, today's hunt would end with this one kill. Though I felt a little regret at the huge waste of time, I wasn't too sad since I got to make a valuable connection. So how do we bring this back? Oh, don't worry about that. If it looks like we really can't, we just have to call 119-1. We only need to reimburse them for the trip. That's ingenious, we laugh together. At that moment. Hold on, Russell. A faint sound rang out from a tree. Shh. I took out my gun once more with my index finger over my mouth. Then, I fired at the direction of the sound. Thud. There was no scream. Only the sound of a beefy body crashing down rang out. Huh? What happened? It's a black pelican. Yes? Park Suyuk might not have been able to see anything, but I could see it clearly. My eyes could see a thousand miles away. Black pelican? Yep. Fantastic. We should take this one back too. 1. 119 is Korea's emergency contact number chapter 19. Connections. 2. Friday morning. I opened my eyes while in bed. My entire body started aching immediately. Iron hog and black pelican. No matter how much I thought about it, the monsters I hunted yesterday were too heavy. Thankfully, I made it back before curfew. Otherwise, I would have faced disciplinary punishment on top of minus points. Arg. Fortunately, today was Friday, so there wasn't a class that required me to use my body. Getting up tiredly, I checked my smartwatch first. There were three unseen messages. 810,131 has been deposited. 450,271 has been deposited. Here is the payment for yesterday's monsters. I hope to work with you again. SH Agency Head Manager, Park Suyuk, the payment was quicker than I expected. If I remembered correctly, exclusive contracts had monthly payments. Mine must have been quick because it was a one-time deal. But still, to have them taken care of overnight. He sure was quick with his work. As expected of Park Suyuk. Thanks to Park Suyuk, I now had something to do for the day. I could now open up a brokerage account and buy Packhorse Master Guild stock. 1 million 1 sounded like a good start. I walked into the shower with various thoughts in my head. After washing away my remaining drowsiness with cold water, I dried myself, put on my cadet uniform, and headed out to class. Friday's first period class was on phenomenon realm analysis. From what other cadets were saying, it seemed we were assigned the most difficult theory class since we didn't have physical training today. Of course, this didn't apply to me. I sat down on a random seat and took out my laptop. After finding out that only I could see it, I openly fiddled around with it in class. Equals 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 master sharpshooter, low intermediate rank, spirit attribute, evolving, grade 8, proficiency exp 13%, master sharpshooters training familiarity with all long-ranged weapons, thousand mile eyes can see far away and predict a target's movement path. Increases speed and perception by 0.3 points. Bullet time in combat only and once every 24 hours. You can spend 10 seconds in bullet time. Sharpshooter of reversal depending on Kim Hajin's invariable stat. Luck. You can deal bonus damage against a stronger enemy. Equals 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 sharpshooter of reversal. A low rank skill I got from defeating a Jin. Was quite decent. Master. Sharpshooter had also reached grade 8. Of course, its growth speed would decrease the higher its grade went. Sit down. While I was observing my growth in delight, the professor walked in. There is a written exam today like I mentioned last time. A test was announced out of the blue. Heartfelt groans erupted from the cadets. 
It seemed I wasn't the only one only now hearing about this. Really? I didn't study at all. In front of me, Chai Niyun muttered in despair. Kim Suha, who was sitting next to her, promptly showed her the notes I took down yesterday. Chai Niyun coughed in embarrassment. Now, now, quiet down. The professor silenced the cadets in a heartless tone before handing out the exam sheet. After a few scuffling sounds of paper, I also received an exam sheet. Problem 1. Describe the monster, Pygmalion. Problem 2. Describe the nine evils, genes. Problem 3. State the attributes that humans can manifest in the phenomenon realm. Problem 4. The problem's difficulty and ambiguity were higher than what I had imagined. Other cadets also sighed the moment they glanced at the problems. But I was different. I had answers to all of the problems on my laptop. Pygmalions are fallen ghosts whose intelligence exceeds that of humans. They cannot be seen in the phenomenon realm, and they act as humans after possessing them. Because of this behavior, some argue that they should be classified as a jinn. Of course, I would get the problem wrong if any of their settings were changed, but that was even better. It meant I would learn more about settings that had changed. What? After I was almost done writing all the answers. What happened? My laptop suddenly shut down. That is, my lifeline shut down. I began to sweat from the unexpected occurrence. And because I was in the middle of an exam, there wasn't anything I could do. Then, blue words suddenly appeared on the LCD screen. A month has passed, the laptop's functionality will be updated, target Kim Hajin's observation and reading gift will be strengthened, there was a meeting on every even-numbered Fridays. Yu Yunha called this social leadership meeting, Noble Society. Yu Yunha wanted Noble Society to be a source of vital connections once she graduated, but Chai Niyun, who was the most important connection, didn't have much thought about it. To Chai Niyun, Noble Society was like an alumni reunion, where she met with her childhood friends. Today's Noble Society meeting was at a coffee shop in Seoul. How are your grades? It's good enough. The Jong Hak I know isn't content unless he gets first place. Only Shin Jong Hak and Yu Yun Ha were in the coffee shop. No other customers were present. It was a popular coffee shop, but Yu Yun Ha had talked to the owner to rent the place out. Like I said, it's good enough. Yeah, okay. Clang, the bell on the coffee shop's door rang. Yu Yun Ha and Shin Jong Hak turned towards the door. It was Chai Niyun, who was wearing Chai Niyun like clothes, blue jeans and a black jacket over a slightly see through white shirt. She walked like a man, but her elegant figure was more charming than any other woman. Chai Niyun, you came today? Shin Jong Hak waved his hand in greeting. Chai Niyun walked over and spoke after looking around the shop. Hey, where did your lackeys go? In Chai Niyun's eyes, Shin Jong Hak was the type of person who liked to bring around lackeys. These followers of Shin Jong Hak were generally sons of large corporations or guilds, and despite Shin Jong Hak labeling them as friends, the hierarchy in their relationship was clear for anyone to see. Their training. Midterms are soon. Oh, those guys also prepare for exams? Chai Niyun made a snarky comment and sat down. Rather than that, how did you do on the last written exam? Are you making fun of me? No, it's just that you asked whether the other guys were preparing for exams. That's different. I'm talking about the combat exam. Who cares if you're good at theory? Unlike when he was with Yu Yunha, Shin Jong Hak actively brought up conversation topics. Chai Niyun's replies were no different than usual. Yu Yunha watched the two talk quietly. She didn't think much of it. They were just talking as friends. But the look on Shin Jong Hak's face when he was talking to Chai Niyun, his soft smile, and kind eyes, didn't come to Yu Yunha too pleasantly. KRRK. Yu Yunha lightly clenched her teeth and grabbed the cup of coffee she ordered for Chai Niyun. Because she ordered it 30 minutes ago, it was lukewarm. She released her magic power into the cup, heating the coffee. By the way, do you know Kim Hajin? But at that moment, her focus completely scattered and her ears opened up. Yu Yunha inadvertently joined the conversation. Kim Hajin? Yeah, what about him? Chai Niyun's face became severely distorted. What do you think about that bastard, Yunha? Yu Yunha felt her heart drop. Kim Hajin. Normally, 
she wouldn't have had to think about someone like Kim Hajin. Even if she did, her assessment of him would have been I don't care or that crazy psycho. But the circumstance had changed. There was something about him. She wasn't sure exactly what, but he wasn't so simple. But Yu Yunha purposefully hit her inner thoughts. What do you mean? He's just an average guy. No, never mind. Chai Niyun grabbed her cup of coffee roughly. Yu Yunha swallowed her saliva at Chai Niyun's strange reaction. That bastard is hiding something for sure. What are you so angry about? This time, Shin Jong Hak asked. His face was full of smiles, as though he enjoyed seeing an angry Chai Niyun. You don't know? There was a Jin at the National Weapons Museum during the recent monster incident in Seoul. Then, that bastard. With that, Chai Niyun gulped down her coffee. She then immediately spurted it out. Ock. Fuck, it's hot. Water. Water. Panting, she looked for cold water. Yu Yunha carefully consoled her, feeling a knot in her heart being loosened. Niyun, that's coffee, not cold water. You haven't changed, have you? Shin Jong Hak laughed, while an employee quickly ran over with cold water. H here. Chai Niyun quickly grabbed it and gulped it down. Ah, I burned my tongue. Then, she caught her breath before continuing where she left off. Anyways, that Jin was stronger than Kim Suha and I thought. Even I. At that point, Chai Niyun paused once more and watched her two listeners. Because what happened back then was embarrassing, she didn't want to talk about it in detail. Even I struggled a bit. Kim Suha's a different story, but how can an ordinary cadet like him deal such fatal damage to a jin? What happened exactly? I don't want to explain it in detail. Just know that he blew up a jin's arm. With a gun at that. A gun. How does that make sense? Blowing up a jin's arm with a gun. Indeed, it was hard to believe without seeing it in person. Yu Yunha pondered as she rubbed her chin. She'd seen Kim Hajin fight. It was true that he was quick, but it was hard to say he had the attack power to break a Jin's arm. Ah wait. At that moment, Chai Niyun suddenly put on a serious tone. Her eyes looked nervous and she seemed hesitant to speak. Naturally, Shin Jong Hak and Yu Yunha's attention fell on her. Could it be that he's a Jin? Niyun, if he was a Jin, he wouldn't have attacked a fellow Jin. But Yu Yunha quickly broke the atmosphere with a sentence. I guess you're right. Anyways, there's something about that guy. So you're telling me you don't like him? At that moment, Shin Jong Hak, who was listening without a word, broke his silence. Chai Niyun and Yu Yunha both understood the hidden meaning behind his words. Chai Niyun pondered on how to answer. She knew Shin Jong Hak's personality well. Depending on her answer, that man's future would change noticeably. After a bit of contemplation, Chai Niyun replied briefly. I'm not sure, but something like that. Chapter 20. Connections, 3, Updating in Progress. 79%, currently, it was 9 a.m., Saturday. Clearly, my laptop was still dead. It only went up by 79% in a whole day. I wondered what amazing new features it would get. On the other hand, I was dying of anxiousness as I waited. I was staring at the laptop's update percentage when my smartwatch rang. Brokerage account for Kim Hajin has opened. Oh, it's done. I was also concerned about this too. It would have been easy if I was an adult, but I was still a minor. Just like in the previous world, a minor couldn't open a brokerage account without a guardian's agreement. If I wasn't a cadet at Cube, it would have been impossible to open an brokerage account. Now that I had an account, I immediately began to work. First, using my smartwatch, I moved money over to my new brokerage account. 1 million won from the previous monster hunt and 2 million won that I already had, a total of 3 million. It was a pocket change compared to what many of the other traders had, but it was enough to get me started. I opened the stock trading program. The guild stock market operated on weekends to differentiate them from the normal stock market. Guild, Pack Horse Master, the Pack Horse Master Guild was listed on the exchange. Each stock was worth 171. Since I wasn't knowledgeable about complicated things like short stock selling, short stock buying, and price fluctuation, I simply bought however much I could. 17,647 stocks of Packhorse Master Guild purchased, it didn't take long. 
But since it felt a bit weird to just leave, I looked up a stock-related forum board. Gathering of people who enjoy stock exchange, with 930,000 members, this was the biggest forum for stock-related topics. I searched for Pack Horse Master. List of new guilds, guilds newly listed, guild market is hard nowadays none of the new guilds look promising, none of the posts were specifically about Pack Horse Master, only mentioning it briefly. Well, what did I expect from an online forum? I clicked my tongue and turned off the smartwatch. In this world where information was equivalent to money, even the existence of a website had to be found out through money. Thus, expert brokers did not even spare a glance at free-to-use online forums. Information guilds had their own intranets where one could buy information, and those who wished to stay secret would use something like the Violet Banquet. Oh, right. Speaking of staying in secret, there was one group inhabiting the dark. Chameleon Troop. First revealed halfway through the story, the Chameleon Troop was the most powerful gang in my novel, whose members would play an important part until the late stages of the novel. The group's name was derived from a chameleon's ability to camouflage, just like how a chameleon changed its color to hide. The Chameleon Troop was a secretive group whose members' identities remained absolutely hidden. As of now, one seat of the Chameleon Troop was empty. This seat would remain open for another year or two, and come to play an important role in the story. I knew who the Chameleon Troop's leader was and where she operated. Other than Chameleon Troop's members, I should be the only one who knew this information. Chameleon Troop was a gang of criminals, but they also rejected genes. And in this world, genes were the absolute evil. If I could become Chameleon Troop's member. Well, that was unrealistic, so if I could at least become friends with its leader, I might be able to transform them into a supporting role. Just when I was thinking such things. UK. Completely out of the blue, an intense pain emerged on my left upper arm. It was as though a heated knife was carving my skin. Blood spurted out from my arm, hitting my widened eyes. I hurriedly pulled up my sleeve. A strange scar was being drawn on my upper arm. The hell. It was an incomprehensible scar and pain. I clenched my teeth and put my hand over the scar gushing with blood. At the same time, a tsunami of information flooded into my brain. This stigma is one of the authorities of the creator. It contains magic power, one streak of stigma will be inscribed each time your total acquired SP reaches a certain level, which is when your fame increases by a level. You can freely use the magic power stored inside stigma which will slowly regenerate over 24 hours even if depleted. Ah, an indescribable throbbing pain rang out in my head and arm. But even in the wave of such paralyzing pain, I could clearly see the laptop screen. Update list, Book of Truth has been added to the gift, observation and reading, the weekend sky was clear and blue. The early spring weather was a chilly, but still had a bit of warmth to it. But I was unable to enjoy this beautiful day to myself as I was summoned to go to Souls Association Tower. It was to receive commendation for subjugating the jinn in the recent incident. Really, couldn't they just come to give it themselves? The conferment ceremony took place at a garden in Association Tower, and many people were already gathered by the time I arrived. However, the conferment ceremony seemed nowhere close to starting. Kim Suha, Chai Niyun, and I were forced into a ceremony rehearsal because we would receive our commendations from a dignitary, but the dignitary himself was late and we were forced to wait. Because Chai Niyun was next to me, it felt like I was sitting on needles. Ham. Happy? Once. I yawned once because I was bored. But Chai Niyun, who was looking for an excuse to pick a fight, finally shot back at me. I retorted briefly. What? You've had a smirk for a while. It was unfair that she could look so pretty while making such remarks. I planned to stay silent at first, but I suddenly remembered the reason I was here. You didn't forget, did you? Forget what? Each of her words was covered in thorns. I spoke as I stared into her eyes. That I saved you. She still looked angry, but she shut her mouth at a loss for words. That's that and this is. Stop, both of you. After a momentary contemplation, Chai Niyun opened her mouth to strike back, when Kim Suha cut in. W what? Chai Niyun, switch seats with me. For the record, our seats were ordered, Kim Suha, Chai Niyun, then me. 
And if I refuse? Hurry. No. Why? I don't want to. Seeing them getting all touchy didn't feel too good. Thankfully, they're obscene? Scuffle quickly ended, and Kim Suha replaced the seat next to me. Kim Suha looked at me and let out a dry cough. Thank you for back then. What? I was struck dumb with amazement. I wanted to be left alone, so why was he still talking to me? Back at the museum, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have won. No, you would have won even without me. If I wasn't there back then, Kim Suha might have awakened an even higher dimensional power. Main characters always became strong through hardships and dangers. No. With that single word, Kim Suha turned his gaze back. At that moment, an extraordinary undulation of magic power rang out. The dignitary had finally arrived. H he's here. Everyone get ready. He was today's commendation conferrer, the master rank hero titled Wolf of Valhalla. His shoulder-length hair was curved up slightly, and he had a well-trimmed beard uncommon for an eastern man. The regality given off by his extraordinary appearance wasn't limited to an invisible feeling. As though a wind was blowing, each of his steps caused a thin undulation of magic power. His raw power had already reached a realm where even he couldn't fully control it. Who? Looking around the room with his wolf-like eyes, the master rank hero, you see Huke, murmured quietly, these fuckers telling me what to do. It was so quiet that only I could hear it with my gift. With a moderate arrogance and a lethargic attitude, you see Huke pushed back the guests flocking towards him. He walked up to the podium commandingly. His attendants ran up and handed him a paper which listed the order of the ceremony. Clicking his tongue, you see Huke glanced at the paper before he threw it away. His attendants took the discarded paper and ran off. Now, the confirmant ceremony will begin. The host announced the start of the ceremony. The commendation will be conferred by the rank 37 master rank hero, Sir Yusi Huk. As we rehearsed, Kim Suha, Chai Niyun, and I walked up to the podium. Yusi Huk smirked as soon as he saw Kim Suha. Are you Kim Suha? Yes, um. I can see why those guys want you. Intense interest was reflected in Yusi Huk's eyes. With an unusual kindness, Yusi Huk advised Kim Suha. Don't join the association. It might even be better to join the vast expanse and become a hunter. Being a hero is nothing but a baggage of responsibility and no fun. Still, a hero fits my personality best. Kim Suha revealed a clear refusal with a smile. In response, the corner of Yusi Huk's mouth twisted up. You're a boring guy. Fine. And you, it's been a while, eh? This time, it was Chai Niyun. When her eyes met him, she made a bitter expression. It's been a while. Your father told me to take care of you, but I don't plan on doing that. I. Master. I'm not your master. A bow user like you think you can call me master? Do you want to die? At his open reproach, Chai Niyun only stuck out her mouth in a pout. Seeing her reduced to such a pathetic state, I struggled to hold in my laughter. And who are you? I am Cadet Kim Hajin. Oh. Okay. That was it for me. A completely different treatment than what Kim Suha and Chai Niyun got. It seemed indifference really was more painful than hatred.